Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So I get asked all the time about which cores are best to use with the classic systems. So that's what this video is going to focus on today. Now the cores that I list here in this video are just the ones that I have personal experience with. You may have had different experiences with different cores, but again, this is my opinion. Also, my opinion of what I consider something running may differ from yours. I'm okay with a little bit of slowdown, a little bit of sound popping. As long as the main gameplay is still there, I consider that okay. I'll also let you know if you need a specific BIOS file, depending on what core you use. So first, let's get started with what doesn't work. In terms of just the classic systems, Saturn, Jaguar, and 3D arcade games will not run. Also, games such as Killer Instinct 1 and 2, Primal Rage, and many others just for some reason aren't compatible with the versions of these cores. But they're still playable on other platforms like Windows or PS3. Let's move on to what works, starting with the Atari systems. I only have experience with the 2600 and the Lynx. For the 2600 core, you want to use Stella, and for the Lynx, you want Handy. Moving on to a couple computer-based cores. Now I admit I don't have a lot of experience with these cores, so you may want to go to another source for better performance. You have the Vice Core with the Commodore 64, PUAE for the Amiga. Now with this core, a BIOS is needed. When I did my tutorial for it, I had to create my own BIOS files. Things may have changed. Again, you're gonna wanna consult somebody who knows more about the core than I do. Someone like KMDF Manic or QClark. For DOS games, you have Scum VM and DOSBox. I've never made a tutorial on these because I could never get these running in the way I wanted to. I've gotten games to start, but because I don't know the settings, I couldn't control how fast the games played or how the controls worked. And then RPG Maker 2000 and 2003 games can be played with Easy RPG. Neo Geo Pocket games run really well on these systems. You just need the Mednafin NGP core. For the PlayStation 1 and the PSP, I have two cores I can recommend. For PS1, you want the PCSX Rearmed Neon. The BIOS files you need for a PlayStation 1 are the SEPH files. You want 5500, 5501 and 5502 bin. For PSP, you want the PPSS PP core. For the TurboGrafx-16 and TurboGrafx-16 CD core, you want the Mednafin PCE Fast. I found for the CD games, the three BIOSes you need are DiskSys.ROM, Express.PCE, and SysCard3 PCE. There's two cores you can use for Sega games, but only one of them specifically will work for 32X games. That is Pico Drive. For everything else, you can use Genesis Plus GX, which includes the Master System, the Genesis, the Game Gear, and Sega CD. For Sega CD, you will need BIOS files. BIOS underscore CD underscore J E N U dot bin. Why 
wipe out enemy fighters. For the Dreamcast, you have the Raycast core. Most 2D games will work just fine, a lot of 3D games will struggle. They do play a little bit better on the PlayStation Classic, and they do require a BIOS file. You have to make a DC folder, and within that folder, you'll have DC underscore BIOS.bin and DC underscore Flash.bin. <laughs> Moving on to the Nintendo systems. Virtual Boy games play pretty good with some graphical issues. You want the Mednafin VB core. For NES games, I recommend either the FCEU MM core or NES Topia. For Super Nintendo, you want the SNES 9X cores. There's a few that I recommend for different reasons. Some change compatibility for different games, they will run them perfectly. Other times you'll have different speed adjustments or graphical issues. And then some will work differently with ROM hacks. I found that ROM hacks work better with 2002 and 2005. So the SNES 2002, 2005, 2010, and the newest version which is SNES 9X with no date on it. All these are actually recommended if you want to get a complete experience with Super Nintendo. N64 games are really hit or miss. I'd say maybe half the library is actually playable on these systems. But you can use either the Moopin or Gloopin cores. Some games will play better with Moopin and some with Gloopin. For Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, you want the Gambat Core. These play them perfectly. For Game Boy Advance games, I recommend either MGBA or GPSP. The only difference I can remember between the two cores is that MGBA will allow for safe states, whereas GPSP has a little bit better compatibility. If you're using GPSP, you will need a BIOS file. It is GPA underscore BIOS dot bin. For Nintendo DS, you cannot go wrong with the Drastic Core. Even on the NES and SNES Classic, it will play most of these games at full speed perfectly. If you're using the PlayStation Classic on some games, you can raise the resolution and make them look even better. And for arcade games, you have two main core sets for arcade games. You have the FBA core set and the main core set. What it comes down to with arcade games are where you get your ROMs from. There are certain core sets for different MAME versions and different FBA versions. I get my ROMs from the MAME 0.78 ROM set. I use those ROMs with the MAME 2003 core. I've had almost 100% success every single time using games from that ROM set on that core. And you'll see in my recent Will It Run series that that's pretty much what I recommend every single time. 
As for BIOS files, there's only two BIOS files and they're for very specific types of games. The first BIOS file is for Capcom System Play 2 games, like the Mega Man fighting games and some of the Street Fighter games. You want the qsound.zip BIOS file. And for Neo Geo arcade games, you want the Neo Geo.zip file. So that's all I have for you guys today regarding RetroArch cores. So I hope that can clarify some things for you guys and it makes it a little bit easier deciding on which core to use. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.